In this video we will learn about microeconomics and macroeconomics. We will discuss what is microeconomics, along with its definition, importance and limitations of microeconomics. We will then know more about what is macroeconomics, along with its definition and importance. And finally we'll be learning the difference between microeconomics and macroeconomics in a tabular form. So, make sure to watch the full lecture to generate a more clear concept on these topics. Economics is divided into two branches, namely, microeconomics and macroeconomics. Microeconomics deals with the economic problems of a single industry or organization, while macroeconomics deals with the problems of an economy as a whole. Both of these branches contribute a major part in business analysis and decision making directly or indirectly. Now, let us discuss about these two branches of economics in detail. So, what is microeconomics? Microeconomics is a branch of economics that deals with the study of the economic behavior of individual organizations or consumers in an economy. Moreover, Microeconomics focuses on the supply and demand patterns and price and output determination of individual markets. Microeconomics lays emphasis on decisions related to the selection of resources, the amount of output to be produced, and the price of products of an organization. Thus, it can be said that the focus of microeconomics is always at the individual level. Now, let's see how we can define microeconomics. We will discuss some important definitions of microeconomics. According to Henderson and Quant, microeconomics is the study of economic actions of individuals and well-defined groups of individuals. According to Gnarakli, microeconomics deals with the division of the total output among industries, products and firms and the allocation of the resources among competitive use. It considers problems of the income distribution. Its interest is in relating prices of particular goods and services. According to Professor Bling, microeconomics is the study of a particular firm, a particular household, individual price, wages, income, industry and particular commodity. According to Watson, microeconomics is the theory of the behavior of small units, like the consumers, producers and markets. And, according to Professor Leftwich, Microeconomics is concerned with the economic activities of economic units as consumers, resource owners and business firms. Now, let's look into the importance of microeconomics. The importance of microeconomics is widespread, some importance and use of microeconomics include. Importance number 1, Price Determination Microeconomics plays an important role in price determination and volume of production, allocation of resources etc. Number 2, helps in aggregate study of economic problems, the total economy is constituted of several small units. Hence, after study of small units, the study of the problem of the total economy becomes easier. Economics studies economics problems whereas in microeconomics, small units are studied, which facilitates in understanding the economy and aggregate study of bigger problem. Number 3, it explains various aspects of international trade. Microeconomics theories explain many aspects of international trade such as the emergence, nature and gains of international trade, determination of exchange rate, impact of tariffs on prices etc. Number 4, helps in individual decisions, microeconomics studies the individual units. Hence, economic decisions in respect to individual units may be taken easily, with its help. A consumer may take decision in what quantity a commodity is to be purchased, at various prices. Similarly, a firm or an industry can take decisions decision regarding volume of production at various levels, taking production costs into consideration. Number 5, it teaches the art of economizing, microeconomic principles deal with the economizing of scarce resources and show how to use them efficiently. Microeconomic law, like the law of substitution, shows how a consumer can maximize his satisfaction by equating the ratios of marginal utilities to the prices of different goods which he buys. Likewise, there is optimum utilization of the factors of production when their marginal products become unequal. Number 6, it helps in regional policy formulation. With the help of microeconomics the study of particular area or particular use is possible. With its help, suggestion may be given in the context of problems of any related industry, by the study of government policies. 
For example problem of textile industry may be studied, with reference to government polices and necessary suggestion may be given. Number 7, it provides a base to business decision making, for example the knowledge of price theory has its own significance in practical business decision making and it is useful to a business in determining the price policy. It guides in attainment of maximum productivity through optimum allocation of his given resources. And, importance number 8, helpful in economic policy formulation, microeconomics is useful in determination of economic policies. The justification of various economic policies of the government is decided, in the context of their effects on individual units. In these policies, effects on prices, effects on price of any particular commodity, wages and personal, consumption may be tested. Now, let's talk about the limitations of microeconomics. Microeconomics is very important and useful for economics analysis. But, there are some limitations of microeconomics. Limitation number 1, unrealistic and impractical assumptions, microeconomics is based on several unrealistic and impractical assumptions and hence the conclusions drawn are not correct and their desired use does not become possible. The entire microeconomics is based on the assumption of full employment even in a short term analysis, which is unrealistic. Microeconomic theories assume laissez-faire policy and pure capitalism in their behavioristic models. Today there is no pure capitalism, so most of the microeconomic theories have no significant relevance to practice. Situation perceived by assumptions like perfect competition, full employment, full dynamism, etc. are not visible in real life. Number 2, Ignorance of Macroeconomy, Microeconomics studies specific economic units separately from the rest of the whole economy. It explains only a part and not the whole of working of an economic system. Hence, complete knowledge of specific areas becomes possible but drawing of conclusions regarding the whole economy is not possible by it. Number 3, Unusable for studies of certain economic problems, microeconomics is not useful for study of certain economic problems. For solution and study of modern problems, government recognizes national level as the base, which is related to macroeconomics. Intervention of government is consistently increasing in various economic activities. Employment policy, tariff policy, distribution of income and wealth, export input policy, industrialization, economic planning and population are subjects of national importance. Their study is possible only in macroeconomics and not in microeconomics. Number 4 by assuming independence of wants and production in the system, microeconomics has failed to consider their dependence effect on economic welfare. And, limitation number 5, microeconomics misleads when one tries to generalize from the individual behavior. It is improper to portray the character and behavior of aggregate simply by generalizing from character and behavior of the individual components. So, we have looked into microeconomics. Now let's move on and learn about macroeconomics. So, what is macroeconomics? Macroeconomics is a branch of economics that mainly deals with the economic behavior of various units combined together. Macroeconomics focuses on the growth of an economy as a whole by undertaking the study of various economic aggregates, such as aggregate supply and demand, changes in employment, gross domestic product, GDP, overall price levels, and inflation. If we want to define macroeconomics, some of the notable and important definitions of macroeconomics are as follows. According to Professor Chamberlain, the macro model deals with aggregative relatives. According to Gardner Ackley, macroeconomics concerns with such variables as the aggregate volume of the output of an economy with the extent to which its resources are employed, with the size of national income and with the general price level. According to Professor Bling, macroeconomics deals not with individual quantities as such but with aggregates of their quantities, not with individual incomes, but with national income, not with individual prices, but with price level, not with individual output but with national output. According to Spencer, macroeconomics is concerned with the economy as a whole or large segment of it. In macroeconomics, attention is focused on such problems as the level of unemployment, the rate of inflation, the nation's total output and other matters of economy-wide significance. Now, after defining it, 
let's look into the importance of macroeconomics. The following points explain the importance of macroeconomics. Importance number 1, macroeconomics helps in understanding the functioning of an economic system and provides a better view of the world's economy. Number 2, it enables nations to formulate various economic policies. Number 3, it helps economists in finding solutions to economic problems by providing various economic theories. Number 4, it helps in bringing stability in prices by supporting detailed analysis of fluctuations in business activities. And, importance number 4, it helps in identifying the causes of the shortage in the balance of payment and determining remedial measures. Now, let's discuss the difference between microeconomics and macroeconomics in a tabular form. Difference number 1, microeconomics studies economic relationships or economic problems of a level of economic units like specific individual, specific firm, specification industry, etc., whereas, macroeconomics studies economic relationships or economic problems of the level of the economy as a whole like national income, national savings, total investments, employment etc. Number 2, Price Determination of Goods and Services their allocation for various functions and determination of the remuneration of the resources are the subject matter of microeconomics. Whereas, subject matter macroeconomics includes level of national income, its effective factors and results, income, employment, savings, investments, etc. Number 3, microeconomics is basically concerned with determination of output and price for an individual firm or industry. Whereas, macroeconomics is basically concerned with determination of aggregate output and general price level in the economy as a whole. Number 4. Scope of microeconomics is limited to the laws based on marginal analysis, whereas, scope of macroeconomics is wide up to the analysis related to the problems of the whole economy. Number 5. Study of microeconomics assumes that macro variables remain constant, for example, it is assumed that aggregate output is given while we are studying determination of output and price of an individual firm or industry. Whereas, the study of macroeconomics assumes that micro variables remain constant. For example, it is assumed that distribution of income remains constant when we are studying the level of output in the economy. Number 6, Microeconomics is helpful for individual units, firms and industries to achieve the optimum level. Whereas, macroeconomics is helpful for optimum situation of the whole economy and bringing economic stability. Number 7, macroeconomics is helpful for optimum situation of the whole economy and bringing economic stability, whereas, level of output, and employment, is the central issue in macroeconomics. Number 8, microeconomics is simple, as compared to macroeconomics. Whereas, macroeconomics is more complicated as compared to microeconomics. Number 9, microeconomics is used for determination of various policies of a firm or industry and talking decisions about them. Whereas, macroeconomics is used for solution of national problems, taking of economic decisions at the level, determination of economic policies and policy decisions at international level. And, difference number 10. The importance of this economics is getting reduced, due to increasing complex problems of the present age. Whereas, macroeconomics is more useful in solution of these problems. Hence, importance of macroeconomics is going on increasing as compared to microeconomics. So, we have learned microeconomics and macroeconomics, we discussed what is microeconomics, along with its definition, importance and limitations of microeconomics. We knew more about what is macroeconomics, along with its definition and importance, and finally learned the difference between microeconomics and macroeconomics using a comparison table. If this lecture was helpful, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.